Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the second webinar in our EBIS sneak peek series. Welcome to more precise product classification for today's digital world presented by Mary Shaw. Mary is an industry veteran with over 34 years of experience, 16 of which she spent leading the industry standards committee at IDEA. She is currently continuing her efforts to bring e-commerce data standards to our industry with her nonprofit organization, ETIM North America. She represents North America on the ETIM International General Assembly and is executive board member of directors vice president. If you have any questions or comments during the presentation, you can type them into the Q&A or the chat and we will be answering them at the end. There will also be a brief sur survey at the completion of the webinar and we'd appreciate it if everyone completed this for us to get your feedback. So Mary, you can have the floor. Thank you, Eliana. Can you all hear me well? I hope so. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. I am the executive director of ETIM North America and a nonprofit organization charged with bringing the global ETIM classification standard to North America and adapting it appropriately for use in our lo local market. Let me start by thanking IDEA for hosting this session and including us in their virtual eBiz webinar series. IDEA plays a strategic role for the industry as they are the gateway for the digital exchange of product data between manufacturers and distributors, supporting the data standards that the industry chooses to adopt. As Eliana said, we have a lot to cover today, so if you could please save your questions to the end or put them in the chat box or the uh, Q&A box. With that said, I'm here today to introduce you to the ETIM data classification standard and show you how it can benefit your business. But let's first start with you. What brought you here today? Did one or more of your customers ask you to provide them with ETIM structured data? Or do you recognize the strategic importance of your product data but need guidance on how to take it to the next level? Or maybe you've heard about ETIM but have more questions than answers. Or maybe it's all three. My hopes are that by the end of this session, you will have a better understanding of ETIM and why it is a valuable data standard for a North American market. So let me set the stage for ETIM's role in the digitalization of today's product information and how it flows through the industry's ecosystem. As a manufacturer, your products are the solutions that contractors, electricians, and end users are searching for to start and complete the projects. Whether that be for new construction, a retrofit for existing construction, or whatever their need is. And you heavily rely on your distributors capabilities and channels to market your products to their customers. Your product information feeds into their multi-channel digital sales strategies, their e-commerce platforms, their SEO strategies, and most importantly, their web stores, where their customers go to find products. Their customers depend on web stores to find, to be able to fine tune their searching and filtering in order to find the right product the first time. But they are all dependent on rich product data. Where will it, they get it from? As the guardian of your product data, the true source, you should be asking yourselves, how can I help the users of my products find the right product for their needs? And how can I get this information in their hands by way of my distributors? As a distributor, you are dependent on your suppliers to provide you with the rich product content that you need to sell their products. You shouldn't have to create the data yourself. You shouldn't have to manipulate the data from different suppliers in order to fit it into your systems. You should be able to get all of this rich data from all of your suppliers in a consistent format. This also applies to all the other sections of our channels. Manufacturers rep, reps need rich, consistent content for their business systems to help them support project design and customer service as they interact with the channel on the manufacturer's behalf. Design professionals like engineers and architects 
needed in assorted digital formats for CAD, BIM, and 3D modeling software. And as the ultimate consumer of the product, contractors rely on consistently accurate product information in order to spec, source, and install material. Having this rich data in their estimating and procurement systems makes it a whole lot easier for them to find the right product to fit their specific needs. So the stage is set. It should be clear that rich digitalized content is needed through the entire industry ecosystem. But what is the ETIM classification and how does it benefit me? ETIM is a language independent classification model. We'll get to the language independent part in a bit. Although all products have information about them, pieces of data needed to transact a purchase, not all have the depth of information required to make a successful sale the first time. Product information can be defined as transactional or master data and reference data, which consists of digital assets and classification descriptors. Transactional data is the traditional information about the product, the kind that used to be printed in price books, brochures, catalogs, and kept in ERP systems for ordering and invoicing. Part numbers, descriptions, pricing, packaging, etc. Digital assets are the marketing information used to visually see the product, its design and specification. Images, safety data sheets, spec sheets, technical drawings, etc. And finally, classification data is the product descriptors needed to complete the picture of the product. Detailed attributes are needed to search and find product on websites. It's a type of information that helps the user narrow down to the correct product during the search process, ensuring they get the exact product for their needs. True rich content needs all three in order to make a successful sale the first time. All manufacturers have at least the transactional, or they wouldn't be in business today. And most have the digital assets. But the final piece of the puzzle, classification data, is not as widely provided. Commonly, this is because it's not easy to pull together. It's usually in separate systems, managed by different people, different departments, and can be wholly inconsistent, if even available. That's where ETIM comes into play. ETIM is a logical, unambiguous classification of products. It's a listing of the most important technical characteristics of each product class, designed to make it easier to describe and find the desired item. By way of an alphanumeric codification, it is language independent. In other words, codes are transmitted to the receiver who has ETIM embedded in their business system, enabling them to incorporate it into their own system's language. So it facilitates reliable transmission of information across countless languages and platforms. And most importantly, it is a complete open standard, meaning anyone can use it for free. But only members have influence on its development. Only members can request changes and new classes, features, and values. ETIM was founded by the Dutch Electrical Installers Association in the 90s, but not long after the wholesalers and manufacturers became involved. The official oversight organization, ETIM International, was formed in 2008 by six initial countries across multiple sectors and is continually growing. Here is a snapshot as of today. ETIM is over 22 national organizations representing 24 countries, is utilized in more than 24 countries, covers multiple sectors, and continues to grow. Notice how often I say we're growing? That's because we are. In fact, we are currently working with companies and associations in Australia and New Zealand to open a national organization there. 
Oh, and just an added note, <laughs> that flag graphic for North America is a little outdated and doesn't reflect our new organization that includes Mexico. ETIM is a simple model based on product classes. Each class has a predetermined set of features, values, and units of measure, including both metric and imperial, as well as synonyms. Every piece of information has an alphanumeric code enabling seamless digital exchange independent of language. Let me show you another example, viewing it in eTIM's main website application. This tool lets you view the model in a user-friendly way. Here is a class called Push Button Complete. It is the one that the current uh, committee is working on. On this Features tab, you can see the predetermined features. And where applicable, it's predetermined values. Although numeric features that have infinite possibilities do not have predetermined values. I think that reason is obvious. Some features are logical, thus yes, no type. And as you can see, each piece of information has its own alphanumeric code. Now take note of a couple of these codes. Let's start with the first two, uh, EF001372 and EF001546. EF for ETIM feature, and like the values, EV for ETIM value. So let's look at these two first one. And if you go up to the top right hand corner, you can select a different language. Let's just try Portuguese. Note the alphanumeric codes remain the same, even though the description is in a different language. Let's go back to English. And on the translations tab, you can see the class name and its synonyms in the different languages. I'm not even going to try to pronounce some of those. And if you go to the reference tab, reference products, you can see images for that type of product. Let's go back here. Viewing of this application is free, but as a member, you would receive login credentials with special viewer rights where you can download classes, set favorites, receive notifications regarding change requests that you might have uh, submitted, etc. There are a few other things that, uh, that this site does, but I won't go into detail on that today. If you would like to check it out yourself, there is a link to the CMT from our website, our ETIM North America website. And if anyone would like a more detailed demo of it, uh, please reach out to me after the webinar. Another of eTIM's applications is the XML validation tool for those companies wanting to send their data to their trading partners using the eTIM BME CAT XML, XML file. This application lets you upload your created file, run it through a validation against the format structure and the eTIM model, and it lets you know if it's correct or if it has an error. If there is an error, it tells you what it is so you can correct it and try again. 
If it is correct, it returns all green and provides you with a certification document that you can download. Keep in mind, this tool is restricted to members only. But you may ask, what value does Eaton bring me? It provides efficiency, one single format, one global model for all in a flat structure that can fit under anyone's internal product taxonomy. It ensures consistent quality because its predetermined features and values are loaded when you first install a model into your PIM or business system. Although it's a single model with predetermined features, it's flexible to be able to handle both metric and imperial measures. It's global as it's used in more than just the 22 national organization countries, covers multiple sectors in at least 17 languages and is constantly growing. It's an industry standard created and governed by the industry members who have the know-how of the products. It's supplier independent and an open standard that anyone can use. And it's not limited to search and find product descriptors. It also includes an extension, ETIM MC, with geometric characteristics specifically intended for 3D modeling. At this point in time, not all product classes have these special characteristics yet, but they eventually will. It is a living standard after all, and we are continuing to grow it. And finally, let me tell you a little about who we are. As a nonprofit organization, our intent is to make it easier for the industry to find and select products they need by way of an industry standard, helping to cut costs out of the channel. Our purpose is to enable the adoption of the ETIM standard in, North, in the North American market by ensuring it has all the products and features included in it that are relevant for doing business here and abroad. In order to ensure it can be fully used in North America, we have begun and will, will continue to form product expert groups who will review the model, checking to ensure the naming conventions match what we use here or changing where necessary. Identify missing products and or features and values that specifically pertain to our North American needs. And identify any regulatory standards that are North, specific to North America, things like Prop 65, that, doesn't apply in Europe for sure. Not only are we translating the model into North American English, we will also be translating it into French Canadian and Mexican Spanish. Product expert group participants are defined as subject matter, subject matter experts for the products. They are the people who understand the product what it is, how it's used, how it's searched for, and how correct information can directly impact their business and bottom line. To participate in our product expert groups, companies must be a member of ETIM North America and is open to all companies in the North American industry that want to be involved and bring their knowledge and expertise to the table and share in the development and adoption of Eaton. We have three types of membership, direct for manufacturers and distributors, non-direct for associations, members of those associations, contractors, estimating software companies, et cetera, and technology solution providers. All members can participate on any of the product expert groups with as many representatives from different business areas as they wish, and includes anyone in any of their entities in all three countries. However, the rules of engagement are slightly different. As direct members, 
Manufacturers and distributors not only can participate on the product expert groups with voting rights, but they also get access to the members only ETIM applications, training and exposure to experienced user members. Direct members also get access to the translations to some of the other languages, those that are not limited to a specific country's own direct members, that is. Non-direct members are welcomed and encouraged to partic participate, similar to direct members bringing their expertise, knowledge, and experience to the table. Although they, although they would not have voting rights or access to the tools or available translations to other countries. Technology solution providers can participate on the product expert groups in an advisory capacity, but without voting rights or access to the translations. They would, however, have access to the tools, but for use with ETIM North America members only. Just a recap of the benefits for becoming a direct member. Voting rights, one per company on each of the product expert groups. Access to the ETIM developed applications. Access to training, education and support. And access to the translations made available from other countries. So far to date, since we launched in mid-February during this COVID year, these are our members. And there are more who are already prepping to join by the end of the month before we start our next product expert groups in October, which are in the process of being determined. To wrap up, I'd like to show you a little video that ETIM International created a while back before they changed the name to ETIM technical information model. It used to be European technical information model, but we made, made that change. Let's see if this works. How well organized data ensures success, thanks to ATOM. This is Max. His company produces high-quality halogen bulbs and supplies them to electrical wholesalers, such as Peter. Peter wants to add the bulbs to his product catalog, but that's a very time-consuming prospect since product data comes in all sorts of formats and needs to be copied over manually. For Peter, that's a pain, so he gives Max a suggestion. Why not use Adam? The European Technical Information Model structures disorganized data and can give any electrotechnical item a clear, straightforward description. Not only that, every product is assigned to one specific article class and defined with all of its relevant features. The product data is represented consistently, no matter the manufacturer, medium, or language. For each of Max's products, he now compiles one coherent entry. As a side effect, duplicates and outdated records are a thing of the past, and Max can transfer the data to distributors and later update it in only a few clicks, thanks to the standardized ATEM interface. Now, when Peter receives product data, there's no need to painstakingly convert it. He can simply copy it over to the catalog. This saves his company plenty of time, and therefore cash. Peter's customers, in turn, are pleased with the data's precision and with how easily they can find suitable products. Thanks to Atom, Max and Peter are able to optimize their e-commerce and boost their sales figures. And in the future, they'll be well equipped since more and more companies in the industry are using Atom, which has been establishing itself internationally as a standard. Peter has Max convinced. Atom is a win-win opportunity. Now Max wants to do his part to help popularize the standard and of course develop it further since the products themselves are constantly developing. That's why he gets involved along with many others at Atom International where he meets industry experts and can actively contribute to shaping the model. Atom, the classification model 
for the electrical industry. Learn more at www.atominternational.com. Okay, I have to say I've heard several times recently in conversations with industry members, they see this as the standard that we've all been waiting for for a long time, something with predetermined values. No more of this uh, having to normalize data internally. So why not join us in the ETIM, um, in the ETIM North America development of this important industry standard. For more information on ETIM, and ETIM North America, please visit our website where you'll see that video again on our main screen. For more information on how you can join us, please reach out to me directly. Thank you for your time today. Eliana, are you there? Yep, so we're now going to start the Q&A portion. Um, so we have a few questions. Okay, let's see what we've got. I'm going to bring this one up on the screen while we talk. Okay, um, first question. It comes from Dave Gordon. Uh, we don't sell internationally, so why is ETIM important to a distributor, to a manufacturer? Uh, first of all, the, the value of ETIM in itself is uh, the alphanumeric codes that um, can be exchanged between manufacturers and distributors domestically. Um, it, it means you don't have to worry about spelling the attributes or the features and, and spelling correctly. It's just a matter of um, transmitting the, the codes between trading partners. Um, it also op opens up opportunities for companies who may not be, have had an opportunity to expand to Europe or outside of Europe. If you are, have adopted the ETIM model, and all of a sudden you discover you have a contractor reaching out to you for supplies uh, in Europe um, and uh, you know, they want to buy from you, they're going to want the data in this format. So it gives you an opportunity to expand, even though you're not in North America to, or not outside of North America today, uh, it gives you a, an expansion opportunity uh, from a global perspective. Uh, let's see, next question, can all ERP systems handle ETIM information? There are, and that is a question I cannot answer because I don't know um, what all the ERP systems uh, capabilities are. I do know that IDEA can handle the data. Uh, it can be transmitted from the manufacturers can load it and uh, distributors can download it. Um, I, uh, any, any global companies like, uh, I'm just trying to think of some of the others, uh, I'm drawing a blank off the top of my head, but any, any companies, any ERP systems that, that are global or that are in Europe as well as North America, they, if they have not implemented it into your version or your, um, your modules, uh, they most likely have it, but I would suggest you reach out to them and ask them if they can do that today. Um, let's see. In looking at your gear, oh wow, it's jumping around. In looking at your gear graphic, how does each and work among the various technology platforms between distributors, contractors, estimating systems, design, CAD systems, and others? ETIM is a set of data of, of product descriptors. It can be um, transmitted to between trading partners through uh, the same method that they would transmit the transactional data. I'll use IDEA as an example for the, the traditional transactional data that are going down, going into and out of the, you know, the, the B views. Um, ETIM can be transmitted the same way. 
So when a distributor communicates information to contractors or their estimating software, um, and one off the top of my head that I know is um, Electric Smarts and NetPricer, uh, they, they exchange data to, and trade service as well, they exchange data with their trading partners, uh, their customers, that information can flow down to, uh, to the end users um, through those software applications. It can, uh, through whatever method that uh, they're using, um, ETIM currently has a, uh, an XML format to exchange the data. It's called ETIM BME CAT. Um, it is, uh, anyone that's heard of it, it is the, uh, I wanna say outdated uh, XML format from Europe that has been enhanced to include the ETIM data um, and as well expanded on uh, by ETIM International because uh, the original was uh, kind of left to, to be on its own. Uh, okay, how do, ETIM, how do companies join ETIM? If my company is already a member in Europe, does that mean we are a member of ETIM North America? No, it does not. Uh, when ETIM first started, they had a central linkage um, to change requests and uh, but as we've expanded and now in uh, 20 24 countries uh, each ETIM International is requiring each country organization to be the support and main point of contact for any requests from their specific country so if you have something you have a regulation or a, um, a product that is specific to France and you're a member of ETIM France, you can submit your change requests through them. If you're a member in France, but your German office uh, has a change, uh, has a new item they wanna add that is specific to, you know, to Germany, but you're not, they're not a member of ETIM Germany, ETIM France cannot submit the change request on Germany's behalf. So the same holds for North America. If you have uh, North American uh, uh, entities and have North American requirements that need to be included in the model, those change requests have to come through uh, me. They have to come through ETIM North America uh, because what we need to do, my responsibility is to see those uh, requests, vet them to make sure that they follow the, uh, the philosophy and the guidelines for the model and uh, then I would submit them on your behalf. Um, so yes, you would, uh, you would need to, uh, if, if you are, have entities in North America and have North American needs, you would need to become a member of ETIM North America to influence the model. Uh, next question, how do companies join? If you go to our website, uh, there is, um, a spot in there where you can submit your request for becoming a member, or you can reach out to me directly and I will send you the forms that you will fill out and send them back to me and, uh, and we go from there. Uh, whoa, okay. Uh, let me scroll down because they're popping in and clearing my screen. How many manufacturers are currently populating ETIM in the data warehouse? Um, last I heard, I believe there was 10, but I'm going to have to leave that up to Sherry Thorne, who I know is on, uh, to answer that in the, um, in the answered section. We have a question from Rick Posniak of Rexel. I see more large industrial buyers beginning to use UNSPSC codes to categorize their spend management initiatives. Does your ETIM classification also, whoop, also match it to the relevant UNSPSC codes? Uh, the one thing about UNSPSC, it was designed for spend analysis and reporting uh, for, from procurement, not necessarily designed for uh, defining uh, features for specific products. That is where there's a difference. Uh, my intent is to eventually, once we have the translation done to North American English, to build a, uh, attempt to build a map 
as best as we can uh, between the UNSPSC based classification attribute standard that IDEA manages uh, and the ETIM model. Uh, okay, if we're already doing, if we're already using DDS and IDEA, will they be transmitting ETIM data via the APIs we have in place for the product language or landing pages? Uh, that's a, that would be a question for DDS and IDEA. Um, I believe that again, IDEA is uh, is able to transmit the data, the ETIM classification data. Uh, through the platform, and I'm positive DDS also has that ability. I will let them uh, answer if they would like on the answer pay answer tab. Uh, okay, next question from Patrick McMurtry. How is ETIM financially supported? As a nonprofit organization, we are totally supported by membership. Uh, the more members we have, uh, the, uh, the more we can do, the more structure we'll have, but we are uh, totally supported by membership. Uh, question from Todd Kadri. What are the differences or similarities between ETIM product classification and IDEA classification attribute standard? Global versus North American standards. Okay, um, the ETIM, the IDEA classification attribute standard was based on UNSPSCs. Um, it currently, uh, last I saw, was it, uh, it has, it is not coded, it does not have alpha numeric codification. Um, it, it does have attributes defined, it does not have values defined. So when communicating the, that standard, you need to uh, provide the full value, uh, the full name of the attribute and the full name of the, uh, whatever the value is that you're going to put in when you communicate that. ETIM on the other hand, ha it has uh, predetermined features and values. So there is no free form texting. Uh, it, it's, it is all uh, transmitted using codes. Um, the, the, as I said earlier, the, the values and, and units of measure are all predetermined except for numeric values where they have infinite possibilities. So those are the only ones where you would put in freeform texting. So no need to normalize, uh, normalize that data. Uh, global versus North American standards. Uh, ETIM is global in the sense that we have, uh, we include Europe, um, all of the uh, Nordic countries, uh, Russia, uh, now North America, uh, Australia we're working on, and I believe there are uh, countries in Africa that, uh, companies within the countries in Africa that are also using it, um, and a few other places on the other side of the world. Uh, we have been in discussions with South America as well, um, it just hasn't gone, uh, we haven't had uh, anyone step up to host their uh, national organization yet. What is the difference between getting data from ETIM versus IDEA? I think I just answered that with the um, alphanumeric coding and the predetermined values. Uh, do you have to go to both or can I get data from just one of them? That is totally your choice. Um, you know, it depends on you know, what you, what you, what you want to um, in your system. The reason that we're promoting ETIM is because it, is, it would be consistent across all suppliers um, and consistent down through the, the channel. Uh, it does not have to be normalized. Uh, question from Brenda, Brendan Thompson. So creating product data with ETIM becomes similar to inputting from multiple choice, uh, multiple choice drop-down database field selections rather than an open format field. Yes, that is, uh, that is correct. Is that its effect on idea? It's, I, I honestly cannot speak to how idea 
handles it in the uh, the connector. Um, I will again have to leave that up to someone from Idea to answer that in the answer tab. Um, but uh, it's it's drop down in the sense that you have a selection of what you can populate and uh, and that's what you would send. So if you're sending an XML file, uh, you you have Etim built into your system. However, you want to view it, uh, you would select from the selection, whether it be in a drop-down format or whatever your, your business system or your PIM system handles. That I cannot speak to, unfortunately. If my company is part of an industry association, are we an automatic member of ETIM? What benefits do I receive through ETIM as a member of an industry association? Um, okay, so for example, we've just recently signed up IMARC. Um, IMARC members can participate on uh, in the product expert groups. Uh, they just would not have voting rights. Anyone that want would want to have voting rights to the final decisions made in the translation and the and um, and the languages uh, would need to be a direct member. But you can be involved, have your voice heard, and uh, you know if the other members, the other direct members, are agree with you, then then you're good. But uh, it, it's just you would not have voting rights. Another question from Greg Smith. Many distributors don't have or struggle with useful product categorization. Not having good product categorization creates challenges with strategic pricing and e-commerce taxonomy. Is ETIM a solution for them? I would say yes. Um, Every, every distributor that would have a, um, a PIM system or a web store or um, a website where they can list products has most likely already come up with their own taxonomy, their own structure, like electrical products, um, wire and cable, uh, lighting devices, um, power distribution, whatever. And then they uh, most likely have, you know, their, where they would select drop down for their manufacturers. Uh, or for their for their different brands that they purchase, what um, what Etim offers is the ability to it, it, it's and I didn't elaborate on it. It's a flat model. It is basically here's the product class, and I'll just say cable ties because that one's near and dear to my heart, and a list of attributes or features that you would want uh, just that you would probably search on or you would need to search on to find the right um, uh, cable tie for your needs. Um, oh, I lost that. Um, so uh, you you would you would be able to take these and put and automatically put these attributes into your system. So every time you have a cable tie on your website, you would um, be able to from every manufacturer that provides you cable ties get the same consistent set of features and values for it. And I hope that makes sense. Uh, okay, Bob Stone, is there a feature defined to capture extra information not defined by existing features? Sort of an additional information feature. Some of the um, features have values of other. Uh, it's, you have one opportunity to do that. Uh, you would select other, and it would have to be communicated with whatever method you're you're communicating all of your transactional information. The purpose of the other is it's it, it's as a a placeholder for um, communication to request an additional attribute, a feature being added to the model. Um, it's it's not widely used, uh, but it's there just in case there is something that you have, which is a feature of your product or a value of the feature that, that no one's ever thought of before. And it makes it a little bit difficult for, for the user receiving it if they, they don't know what that is. But if you get to assigning the attributes to your products, um, and the features to your products and the values, and you find that there, it's just not there, that's the time you reach out to me as a member and say, hey, you know what? we need to ask for this to be added because we have it, other suppliers have it, and we'll go from there. Uh, 
Patrick McMurtry as a distributor, would I need to pay for membership or is that mainly covered by the manufacturers? Oh no, membership it would be required from, uh, paying membership would be required from any member. So manufacturer or distributor, um, if you're a technology provider, you would need to, to pay to become a member. Um, uh, contractor, um, estimating software company, uh, association, every, everyone would have their individual membership. Uh, does your tool allow for some type of query access? Could I write a query that pulls information for just Rockwell push buttons, for example? No, it is not a database. It is, uh, the CMT tool is just a, an online way to, for you to visually view the model. Uh, if you are going to adopt it into your system, we, you can download the, uh, the model. Um, it is in an, uh, and I can't think of the right word, um, whatever XML uh, code is, um, and you can install it into your system. Uh, the, they used to be able to make it available uh, in, in an MS Access database, but uh, they found that not a lot of people were still using it, uh, Access, so then they've gone to XML. Uh, so you, it would, it's not a data, ETIM is not a database, it is just a, here's a set of features and values for your products. I hope that makes sense. If you wanted to write a query to pull pull down Rockwell, that would be with whoever's um, system database you're pulling information from. Okay, good, Brenda. <laughs> Hi, Brenda. Mary. Um, Hi. Yay. Brenda's Hi. going to answer some of the idea questions. <laughs> yes, hello everyone. I'm Brenda Maxwell. I'm the product manager for the Idea Connector. I've been with IDEA for five years, and before that I was with um, Acuity Brands Lighting, so I have some, some um, experience in the electrical industry also. And I did not write down all of the questions that I needed to answer, because I, I um, but I've got a couple of them queued up, and then if there are others, please repeat them in the, um, in the Q&A box. So one of the questions that I heard, and I, I wanted to, I was, I had my mouth open ready to talk, but I realized nobody could hear me, was <laughs> when someone asked about getting data from ETIM or from IDEA. And what I want to remind you is that, and, and what's funny is Mary just talked about this uh, in the last question, is that ETIM is that standard around how the data is formatted. So you can get, whereas I, the IDEA connector is where all where the data is housed and which also you know has that ETIM format and then also has the UNSPSC. So IDEA Connector will support both the ETIM classification system and its associated taxonomy or features and then also the UNSPSC classification system and its associated attributes. So you, you're not really getting the data from ETIM, you're you know, you're, you're getting it in, a, in an ETIM format or a UNSPSC format. So I hope that cleared it up a little bit of it. And then someone else asked about drop downs for um, entry. And yes, in Idea Connector, you have the ability to select which category or um, category code from the ETIM classification system, which one is applicable for your product, and then the system will automatically present to you based on that, the classification code you selected will present to you the applicable features or attributes, but in ETIM they're called features, so the applicable features where you can then select the, and select from the list of values, and as Mary said, for numeric, you will, you will pick, you can enter the numeric value, uh, and I'm sure all of you know that ETIM, the, the units of measure are um, defined as part of the feature. So you, you, don't, you don't have to select the unit of measure. It, it is defined as part of the feature. And then also if it's a, um, if it's a, a, a field with a list of values, then you will select, you can select from that list of values. Or if it's a Boolean where you pick a yes or a no, you can you know, select the yes or no. So, Idea Connector will fully support all of that. If you're loading from files, then you can also, you know, through an, a, a bulk upload, then you can also just include the codes and Idea will appro ap 
apply those appropriate, appropriately to the product. In addition, if a distributor, when he wants to download or extract the information for products out of Idea Connector, will provide not only the codes, but also the values and units of measure too. So you'll get all of that good, rich data when you extract. So Mary, what else did was asked that you passed off to us and we, uh, yeah, that's, um, do you remember anything else? There was, um, Mary's. if we are already using IDEA, will they be transmitting ETIM data via the APIs we have in place for the product landing pages? We, our system is fully supports ETIM and however you're receiving your data today, you can receive ETIM the same way. Okay. Um, there's another question that I'm going to, uh, two from the same person. I'm just going to answer the first question quickly and I'll, and then I'll answer the second one and Brenda, you can add on to it if need be. First one is how many attributes on average is associated with, with an ETIM? So I assume you mean, uh, with an ETIM class. It, there is, there could be anywhere from three to 30 or 40. Uh, it depends on the class, and it depends on whether the um, the the ETIM model or the, the the group that created it determined uh, if they were important features. Any feature that's in ETIM is considered important. Anything that was not considered important uh, would, is not included. Um, so it's you know, always look at the at the features of ETIM as um, as they're the ones that have been determined by by the distributors or the wholesalers and um, suppliers to be important uh, features to describe the product. Uh, so I, you know, there's no fixed number. It's uh, there's no limitation on it. It's it's what's been determined as um, as important. Uh, how does the ETIM work with Idea products that have multiple GTINs? Example: carton and ten pack is one item. Two GTINs. Uh, okay. Uh, how will this look in it as an ETIM? ETIM is classification data descriptors added on to transactional data. GTINs are considered transactional data. So just like today with IDEA products, you would pull down uh, the B1s, the B4s, the B5s. Um, ETIM uh, is, and Brenda, correct me if I'm wrong, B9, whereas the, correct. Uh, whereas the, um, the CAS is uh, B8. So you would it, ETIM data is in is in um, in addition to the traditional transactional data that you would pull down from the platform. I guess I don't need you to add on to that one. <laughs> <laughs> you did um, great. <laughs> um, for an ETIM feature, is only one ETIM value allowed, or are multiple values allowed to be selected per feature? Um, oh, I see these are popping in in between. Sorry about that, folks. It's, uh, it's bouncing all across the screen on me. Um, let me find that question again. Okay, so you would uh, you would select a sing the the way it's designed is there should never be a situation where you would have two features or two values for the same feature. It would be defined as um, uh, as a separate feature, most likely. Uh, the, the key is how it's transacted, uh, it, it, how it's exchanged. That's where, where the opportunity is if you, you know, to, to put in additional. And I'm not um, very well versed on the ETIM BME CAT XML file. Um, I'm not very versed on e XML, period, as anybody that knows me. Um, but I believe that that is a possibility in there. And I would have to get back to you on that, on that question. Um, will ETIM feature include quantity of product. No, quantity of product is, uh, again, totally uh, transactional information. Um, Carol McLogan, we understand that there is a pilot project going on at IDEA to normalize attributes. Is the pilot group considering existing classifications from ETIM and UNSPSC that rather than creating brand new attributes? Brenda, that one's for you. I, um, so yes, there is a pilot project going on. We're actually right now looking at two different 
categories, we are looking at both UNSPSC and ETIM. We do not, you know, our goal is definitely to not create a new classification system. What we're looking to do is to create mapping between the two and to, um, to be able to map the attributes from one to another as, as well we can so that and the idea being to allow a manufacturer to give one set of data and then idea to populate whichever um, or to be able to provide the information in whichever format a receiver would want it. So whether that be UNSPSC or ETIM or E-Class or some other uh, classification system that's that our distributors or our uh, you know receiving customers would would want. Thanks, Brenda. We have one last question, and because we're running out of time here, um, if a company creates their own specific features and value sets, who is responsible for translating these into the seventeen different languages? Um, creating your own features and values is not a standard; it's a proprietary solution. Um, it would not be um, considered as part of the, uh, the 17 different languages. If you had features and values that uh, you felt that you would like to have in the model, uh, I, I encourage you to submit them to me and we will assess them and determine if they are something that, um, that could be added to the model. It is one single model. There isn't a different model for different countries. Uh, the only difference is the language. Um, and it's and the languages are a direct translation of the existing one model. Um, so when it, it, it's there's no there's no non-standard attributes um, for ETIM. Let's just put it that way. Okay, folks, I um, I apologize. Um, my information. Let me just get back up on the screen here. If anyone read, wants to reach out directly uh, with additional questions, I would be happy to answer them. Um, visit the website. You can also contact me through that and uh, I'd be happy to, uh, to answer questions, additional questions. Thank you so much, Mary.